you uh, for inviting me to be here uh, on this uh, great night. Uh, the first night I think we're going to have on, a, on the road to victory in the, in, on June 3rd because we put together a great team uh, with uh, Justin running for Congress and Bill and Ca uh, Carol running for a freeholder and Mike running for county clerk. Uh, we are going to win for the very simple reason. We represent the traditional values of the Republican Party a party that I joined first in 1969 at age 22 because of what I saw developing in the 1960s under uh, a Democrat administration that they think that our money is their money to spend as they wish. And I concluded at that time that if we continued on this pace, and here we are 40 years later and my worst dreams, or my worst nightmares have come true, mm -hmm. that the country has some very serious financial issues the good news is that we have people like Bill and Carol, entrepreneurs who are working, laboring under tremendous uh, difficulty to bring goods and services to the American people. That's the real good news. There are people out there still working hard to serve us as consumers. But the team that we've assembled understand what the issues are. That government has gotten too big, it's gotten too intrusive, taxes are too high, debt is too high, our standard of living is falling because prices are going through the roof. Don't believe what the government's telling you about prices going up a few percent a year. My wife showed me a package today. It's downsized and the price is the same. That means it's really gone up 10 percent in price. And the government's telling us inflation is only 3, 4 percent. Gasoline's up 10 percent in the last three weeks. Everything is going up. I'm in this race. I saw this young lady here. Where was she? This, and here's another young lady. That's the primary reason I'm in this race for the United States Senate. And we're going to win this thing because our financial situation is such that the government announced, or I should say the Tax Foundation announced the other day, the Tax Freedom Day, which is the time from January 1st to sometime in the year we work to pay all our taxes. That's April 23rd for the whole country. If nothing is done for the next 60, 70 years for this young lady, she'll be working from January 1st to August 23rd to pay all her taxes. Because the government has made so many promises for the last half century that the bills are coming due in the next half century. And that really propelled me into this race. My wife and I don't have any children. We have lots of nieces and nephews. And I don't want to see a burden placed on them and their generation that will really swallow up all that they worked for for their lifetime. And so we have to work together over the next several years to really do a job in the federal government, to restructure the federal government, and to go back to what I believe is called first principles. That is restoring the Constitution. When I took an oath to become a United States citizen in 1959, you can applaud on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a little background. I became a citizen in 1959, um, 10 years after I arrived in America at age two with my parents, who were the only ones who survived World War II in their native Poland. And in Lower Manhattan, I raised my right hand to uphold the Constitution when I became a citizen. And I read the Constitution, and I know what it means. I know what the, it means to support the Bill of Rights. And those rights are being taken away from us. Slowly but surely, they're taken away from us. And so I believe we have to restore the Bill of Rights, restore the Constitution. And the founders said to us, more than 200 years ago, follow this document, follow our blueprint, and you will have freedom and prosperity in America. Now, the good news is we have a lot of prosperity. What I'm saying is we could have even more prosperity, so the young people in this room will grow up in a much more prosperous America, and we need to take back our freedoms. Our campaign is about legalizing freedom again in America. That's what the founders shed a lot of blood for in 1776. They took up arms so we could be a free society. We don't have to do that. All we have to do is get the right people in Congress, make the right votes, stand up to people who want to take away our freedoms, want to take away more of our money, want to pile on more debt on future generations. That's what's at stake of this election, because whoever's elected president is going to have to stand up and say, we believe in the general welfare and not the welfare of specific groups. And that's what's driven America for the last 50 years. Here, here. People going to Washington <laughs> people going to Washington and thinking that their neighbor's money is theirs. And I never grew up believing that. Uh, all I saw was my father going to work early in the morning, coming back late at night, working five days a week, sometimes on the weekends, to build a life here in America. And that's the values that are ingrained in me, that if you want something in life, you have to work for it. Nothing, nobody gave us anything in America, we worked for it. So that's the values my parents instilled in us. And the other thing is education. Education is critical for the, American pe for the young people. When you have education, it's 
one of the best anti-poverty programs there is. The other best anti-poverty program is a two-parent family. All the data show a two-parent family. And we can do something about that in government in terms of our tax code and make sure that we don't subsidize uh, things that give us single-parent families. Now, there are great families that are single-parent families, but the main thing is a two-parent family. We have to do something about our borders. We have a situation where we're subsidizing yeah. illegal immigration. And we're, we're risking a great humanitarian crisis in America because of what's called birthright citizenship. A woman comes to America as an illegal immigrant, she gives birth, and that baby automatically becomes a citizen under our Constitution. And, she, and those babies are entitled to all the benefits of being a citizen, and yet the parents are not legal. What if they're deported, or in the process of being deported, because of something that they've done, and the baby has a right to stay here? That's a tremendous humanitarian crisis. We have to stop this in its tracks to make sure that we have a society based upon rules. We came here in 1949 following the rules. Other people That's followed it. the rules, That's and they it. built lives mm -hmm. here based upon a very fundamental principle, the rule of law. Yeah. And so if we follow the rule of law, we're going to have peace, prosperity, and freedom in America. Amen. And the other thing is, our economy needs to be addressed in a way that the people in Washington do not know what's going on. I've been watching this unfold for the last 40 years. George and I were in Washington a few weeks ago, and we met with the staffs of three senators, GOP senators, independently. And I told them what my background is in finance and economics and business. And they said, we need somebody like you in Washington to help our members understand what's going on. Now think of that. They're voting on a $3 trillion budget, and they don't understand the fundamentals of the budget. They don't understand the fundamentals of our economy. And that's the problem we have in Washington. People make these statements without understanding the economy. So I need your help for me, for Justin, for Bill and Carol, and for um, Mike to get into office and to do the hard work of having a free society once again, a free and prosperous society. And if we do that in Burlington County, that'll set the stage for the whole state and we will win this thing because people are supporting us literally all over the country. We have supporters in all, nearly all 50 states. Right. For a U.S. Senate campaign to get support from all 50 states is remarkable. In fact, we have Americans overseas who are supporting our campaign. That's how people feel about what this race is about. It's about restoring the principles that we all believe in, that all Americans should believe in, no matter what party you're from. And if we did that, we would have the type of society the founders gave us, but now we have to restore those principles again. So I don't want to spend all night here because I usually lecture for three hours in the classroom. <laughs> you don't want to hear a three-hour lecture from me. But the point is, we have an opportunity to do something that's going to make the 21st century an American century once again, instead of a sliding back with the rules that we have of bigger and bigger government, more and more debt, more and more inflation, and for the young people in this room, it's not going to be a pretty picture. So I'm willing to roll up my sleeves, I hope you are too, because there's a lot at stake in this election, and with your help, we will win Burlington County, we will win neighboring counties as well, and in January of 2009, I will raise my right hand with Justin in the Congress of the United States, and we'll both be sworn in, into the United States Congress. So thank you very much.